In this session, you will learn how to optimize your workflow with AI and how to automate your marketing as a creator. And we're gonna talk a lot about the future of AI and I have no one other than serial entrepreneur, Mike Phil Same here. He's the CEO and co-founder of Group Digital. And you, if you've been in marketing and kind of entrepreneurship online for a little while, you might have used some of his uh, software tools he developed before. I've certainly used like every webinar, webinar jam, there's Kartra, he's been around, but now he's focused a lot on Groove AI as well, which we will demo and showcase a little bit here today as well. So yeah, we have a lot to cover in this session. So warm welcome, Mike. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to, to be here, Navid. I love talking about AI and I'm excited to jump in. Yeah, I was like checking all the stuff you have going on. There's so many things your new software can do, but let's kind of start backtrack this a little bit and how you got into not entrepreneurship, but <laughs> because you've been doing this for a long time, but like in the world of AI, I'm sure some of your tools yeah. before had this, but you didn't like a lot of tools. They have AI, but they don't, they didn't talk about it before. It's new. It's coming to the main, more mainstream in the entrepreneurship world here in the creator market. I'll, I'll use a metaphor like Albert Einstein, not calling myself a genius or anything. I'm, I'm just using this metaphor. Albert Einstein was a brilliant physicist. And some of the theories that he came out with needed to be proven with math. Compared to any human that we know, Albert Einstein was a brilliant mathematician. But compared to mathematicians, Albert Einstein was at the bottom of the list. Like he was in that world. There's physicists, there's quantum physicists, physicists, theoretical physicists. He was theoretical. And then there are mathematicians that go and prove these different things. Um, the people that would have gotten the Nobel Prize would have been the people that proved the theory, not the person that comes up with the theory. And it came down to literally like just the last couple of days for his theory of general rev relativity because it was very complex. And a mathematician actually proved it right when he was doing it. And he, Albert Einstein got his paper in and they gave it to him. But I would look at that the same for me. I'm patting myself on the back right here, right? But when it comes to positioning offers, I'm genius in that area. I'm not in social media. I'm not in media buying. I'm not in SEO. But when it comes to crafting offers and truly understanding the market, I'm brilliant at it. But the problem is getting that brilliant out. It's like Albert Einstein. I just, I don't want to go to the math board and write it out like Albert Einstein. And for me, it was blank page syndrome. And I would just have to sit there looking there and I, I, every day would come by and I'd find every reason to watch YouTube videos and just procrastinate and then wait till midnight and say, yeah, you know what? I'll do it tomorrow. And then a month would go by. And finally I'd say, Hey, I've got a launch coming in six days. I've got to write this. And then I would write it and I would stay up maybe eight hours into the morning, three days in a row, exhausted, getting raccoon eyes, because the creative process, the blank page syndrome process is difficult. But the overall frame and everything, I had that, but getting each word down was difficult. So the way that I look at AI, it's a calculator for words. Back in 1930s, 1920s, if Albert Einstein had a scientific calculator today, what he would have been able to do in minutes, what, you know, took you know, months on a chalkboard. And I see that as the same thing for us. And so when AI came out, you know, what I would say mainstream, there was Jasper, there was all these different things mm -hmm. with GPT-2. Then when GPT-3 came out, 3.5 and 4.0, ChatGPT comes out and then we all just saw it in November. I remember, and I always tell this story, I had my hands were shaking for a few days going, I was walking around the house saying, there's something here and we need to, we don't, not pivot, we need to be, in front of this, I finally understand what's going on with AI. I started learning about language models, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line is I called my partners and I spoke to them and I said, hey, this is what's going on with AI. This is what it is. And this is the future. I said, guys, this isn't Bitcoin. This isn't NFTs. It's not the next big thing. This is something that's, and I spoke about it the same reason you're having these podcasts is I saw it as this is, there was the microchip the personal computer, the internet, the mobile phone. And now this, I see like, this is going to take humanity on a, on a hockey stick. And I told him, I want to, I want to create a software program. And these are the things that I want to do with it. And after working with ChatGPT for a couple of weeks, I found all of the problems that we had with it. And I said, I want to build basically if Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel had came out, 
imagine everybody telling accountants how to how to run their business on that. And I want to look at us more like Quicken. We're a layer on top of a database and a spreadsheet in that metaphor that creates accounting software. And in our case, we create content creation software by creating a better user interface on top of ChatGPT. And uh, my, my partner said, okay, let's do it. And we created like a Kickstarter program. We pre-sold about $2.5 million, hired some of the best AI people in the world and started uh, developing something that we think is the best tool for digital marketers. Yeah, and I've checked out some videos about it. We're going to demo this later. But what's what's really cool is that, uh, you know, like I, I agree with you with what you're saying about ChatGPT. It's good for certain things, but maybe not the best for all the things that you want to do as a marketer or as a creator. So maybe we can start off. What is ChatGPT really good at? Like, what do you what do you use? I mean, I'm sure you still use it for certain things. What do you use that for? And what's kind of the negatives with it? Why, why you would consider something like what you have developed? Well, so first off, we have to understand what uh, what a language model is, and then what the prompt mm -hmm. is when you prompt. So, if you ever wonder, like, how brilliant ChatGPT can be, like literally brilliant, but then when you're working with it. You're, you're talking to it, and then as you start talking, you gave it initial instructions at the beginning. And I always refer to it as the conversation goes on. It starts to get a little soft, meaning you'll remind it. And you'll say, hey, wait a second. I told you I want all of the output with H1 tags and bold and et cetera, et cetera, and use bullets. And, uh, oh, yes, hey, I'm sorry. I apologize. And then it does it right. <laughs> so what I, what I try to ex explain to people is, have you ever seen the movie Memento, Christopher Nolan's film? Uh, yeah, no, this, yeah, yeah. So uh, ChatGPT is like Lenny, right? Lenny in that movie was basically a character that couldn't form any new memories. So he had all of his world knowledge before he got hit on the head when you know they broke into his house and attacked him and his wife. But once he get hit, hit on the head, he can't form any new memories. His memory lasts for about four minutes. So if you've known Lenny now for the last three years, but it was after his accident. And you're talking to him. You say, hey, Lenny, uh, excuse me. I'm going to go in the ki kitchen and make a cup of coffee. When you come back, he's going to go, what, who are you? What are you doing in my house? And that's essentially what, what ChatGPT is. It has an incredible knowledge. It knows everything up until it was trained November 11th. But then when you start talking to it, it has what, what they call a context window. 4,000 tokens and then went to 16,000 tokens or 32,000 tokens or something like Claude.ai has 100,000 tokens. Basically, what you can imagine that being is like, minutes. You can talk to it for four minutes or 16 minutes or 32 minutes or 100 minutes before it forgets. So what we've noticed with, with ChatGPT is sometimes you want to you want to prime it, you want to like load up an entire video on YouTube and say summarize it. But if it's more than 10 minutes, it says sorry, too much information. So we started working with things like knowledge bases, where you could upload an unlimited amount of data, and then have the, the ChatGPT tap into the knowledge base. And so now you're, we, you're no longer restricted to uh, memory. Um, some of the other things that we, you know, we've noticed uh, you know, about ChatGPT, that it doesn't, well, they've actually added it now. Most people don't know, it's called custom instructions. Uh, it's in the settings, you, can, you could give it uh, a permanent command. Uh, so it, as, you, as you continue to write new paragraphs, if you don't do that, it's gonna forget, like you might start and say, act like William Shakespeare, always talk in rhymes, uh, act in a in a in an angry mood with every one of your responses, and then you write. It'll be William Shakespeare angry, and the more you write, sooner or later, it's going to start turning into ChatGPT. It has that Lenny problem. It 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 can't remember everything that happened before. What we tap into Groove.ai is something called a system prompt, which basically tattoos the information that you want into the brain of the system and so any instructions that you give it are going to be perfect which which will which will demo better when you know when I show it uh, certainly yeah i know i use custom instructions all the time especially if you have one specific business it's really good to just kind of share some information about yourself and you can also yeah. upload and, and now it can actually read links and stuff like that via bing and so it has gotten better for sure but yeah, yeah it's like you need to be still you need you need to still be good with the prompting or asking the right questions there 
I feel like, and I think um, I've used other tools like content at scale and stuff like that for long form content, which is really good. So you can actually, and that's also more promptless. And, uh, mm -hmm. and as I mentioned in the pre-chat, I spoke to John Benson as well for like a long form copy, direct response. And he's also like about the promptless because not everyone, you know, wants to be a master prompt engineer, right? And and that's kind of what you need to be a little bit in order to get the best out of ChatGPT and uh, tools like what you have developed you. I mean, you can show this later, how kind of how it works, but I guess you add some information and then it's, uh, and then it gives you better output essentially. Yeah. What I, what I normally demo when I show, uh, even chat GPT, what I'll do is I'll just write, write me a blog post about Trello and then <laughs> it'll write a blog post and people go, Ooh, ah, that's really great. And I'll say, is that a good blog post in the chat? And people, you know, some people will be like, yeah, it looks good. And I'll say, no, that's actually crap. That's like a yeah, terrible I, I would identify it as crap because I, I like really, really epic content. That's kind of what I like to create. Like in depth for, you know, even if I do affiliate posts, I want it to be really good. I want it to be personal. I want to share my experience and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. Can, so, I what happens is uh, you have to learn prompt engineering. And I, I call pro the problem with prompt engineering, it's the new copywriting. We used to tell people, you have to learn how to write copy. Now you have to be able to say something like, act like uh, you know, a blog expert right in the style of uh, Neil Patel uh, to a target audience of stay-at-home moms with uh, blah, 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 right in a 10th grade reading level. Um, use the, uh, the how-to framework for a blog right in this tone, right in this style. And you have to know all of those things and that gets exhausting. And so that's, that's what we built into a settings panel that you just go down and you check off all of these different things. And now basically all you have to do now is literally what I call just put in the protein. Like everything is kind of like Subway, like you're going through, do you want it toasted? Do you want lettuce? And so you, you go down and you build everything. And at the end it's like, well, what do you want? Tuna salad, chicken, the ground beef. So at this point you just put the protein in and in this case it's Trello. So all you have to do with our prompt is just put in Trello and then it'll write everything based on because you put all the set settings in on the left. Yeah, I think it's still important that you can identify what good content or good copy is. You don't need to maybe be the master as a creator or something like that, but you still sh should be able to do it. And John Benson said the same. You should should learn some copywriting and you should learn kind of how to identify what is good because otherwise you can't say, you know, see what is crap out there when you're getting this from an AI because, you know, it's artificial. You need to be able to add your, you know, the human touch. And that was that's what Google wants anyway. It wants, I mean, it, it might rank content did you have uh, had AI assisted or written by AI with a personal human touch? That's kind of, they want really good content that ranks in Google. So that's, uh, anybody can rank AI content now. I've uh, seen they have kind of changed their mind a little bit on on this topic. They can for sure do this now, so which is really cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's always gonna be important, as you said to, my, my dad used to say, and it's not his expression, but it's been there for a while, inspect what you expect. So you have to be able to know what uh, what is good. So you have to inspect it to, uh, to know what you want exactly. to expect. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we showcase a little bit, like maybe you can showcase in chat GPT a little bit, uh, an example, and then kind of show the difference. I mean, I, I'm curious sure. to kind of see. Absolutely. I'll share my screen. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll start it over here and I'll bring this over. Yeah, you can just make and it, we'll, yeah, maybe make it big or. Yeah, I'll yeah. pop it up a little bit bigger yeah. and we'll open up a chat GPT. Whoops. I think it's cool to kind of see the side by side, like with the, how, like, like what you would use, maybe, maybe you use chat GPT for, so I, I use chat GPT a lot for kind of more simple, like outlines and stuff like that. If I want maybe, you know, different sub, maybe I have some, maybe I have a swipe uh, file of subject lines or something like that. And I want 10 more or some stuff like that. I tend to use it a lot for, and it's really quick. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about a, a typical workflow with chat GPT. Yeah. Right. So let's first go to YouTube. I'm going to go to my channel. Oh, what too many O's there, groove.cm official. And let's go and get like a long live stream here. So we'll go to something live here and <clears throat> let's go back here. This is a, like a four hour webinar. So I'm gonna open this up and now I can take this URL here, okay? And I can copy it and I can go to something called youtubetranscript.com. 
And all I got to do is paste this URL right here, just like that. And it's going to transcribe the entire thing for me. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. And now I go to ChatGPT and I paste this in here and we're going to get an error. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just too much text. I could put this into a Word document and I could paste the first 10 minutes and the second 20 minutes. But remember, we said there's the Lenny problem. And it, it, after about six or seven posts, it starts memory holding what was at the top. So it's going to forget the first five minutes. And then you add another five minutes, it forgets the second five minutes. So you, there's no easy way to use this. So that's number one. Let's go on to the next problem. Let's open up another chat here. And usually what you'll do, right, is you'll have a document open, right? You'll be any of your output you're going to be, you want to want to put here into a Google Docs. And so have you ever had this problem, Navid? You will say something like, write, whoops, let me make this bigger for you. Write yep. me a blog post about Trello. Use H1 and H2 and bold with mark what you see is what you get markdown all right and markdown basically means that if i don't say what is what you get it's going to give you these like pound double pound triple pound which basically translates to bold and italics mm -hmm. and things like that so we're going to do this let's keep it on 3.5 just because, you know, the demos go much faster. Otherwise, we're just going to be staring at the screen. And so now I've gotten this beautiful blog post uh, that is already optimized for SEO. This is fantastic. Look at that. I've got bold. I've got H1 and H2 tags. And here's the only problem with this. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste this right into my Google document. And... Have you ever seen that problem? Yeah. Yeah, That's right? Deep. So it doesn't know how to translate the markdown. So you, uh, you, it's unusable. So what you have to do is you have to say, okay, well, paste without formatting, and you've just lost all of the beautiful work, so you don't even bother telling it to do that anymore. Or you'll say, wait a second, what is this little thing over here where I can click copy? Well, when you click copy and you paste that, well, that gives you all of the markdown and it's not in what you see is what you get format. So that's, that's mm -hmm. one of the first, uh, another problem that we have with chat GPT. The other thing is Navid, have you ever found yourself doing, doing this, what I'm doing right now? Somebody says, Hey, what's that prompt that you use? And you'll go like this. Oh, let me see. When, this is, when this was is every day, every day. <laughs> was it this one? Nope, not this. And where's the search bar? Yeah. Come on, ChatGPT, put a search. It's that simple. Put Every a little search for us. Every tool I'm using that doesn't have a search for something, I, I it bothers me, to be honest. Yeah. Like if, especially if it's like a long list, like even like an email tool I've used before, like didn't have search for the longest time, then they added it, it became so much easier to find what you're looking for. Exactly. So, so you have no search. The other problem is, here's, whoops, let me just see where my headphones are at. 10% and 88%. I don't know why this one's but I can still see it, hear you here. So the yeah. next problem that you have is if you look at this document here, this is a VSL that we wrote for Groove Agency, but where's the ChatGPT that helped create this? So it's fragmented. I don't know which chat over here is linked to which Google Docs. They don't talk because it, there's no project here. So this is what we've done as well with the prompt engineering. Let's go to Groove.ai. So the first thing that we can do is we can create a knowledge base. And let me demonstrate a knowledge base. There's a company called Chatbase. This isn't ours. Okay, there we go. All right. Mm. Nice new site. I like what they did here. I'm yeah. actually going to take a screenshot of this. I really like this. It's okay. Clean, so yeah. we're going to log in. Going to log in as this here. And what we're going to see is I have a different chatbot for my different companies, right? I have a mastermind, I have an agency, I have uh, Groove.cm and AI. And so if we go to Groove.cm, we're going to notice I have a little chatbot right here. But so the first thing that I had to do is I had to train it, right? So let's go in and see how I trained it. The, what you have to do for a knowledge base is basically you have to upload the knowledge. You have to give it PDFs and transcripts of YouTube videos, whatever you have. As you can see here, I could upload files. 
I could just paste text. We can do the same in Groove.ai, by the way, but I'm showing you this here so you can see how you have a conversation with it. Or I can put in HTTP S colon slash slash Groove.cm. I can click crawl and it will literally crawl my website, but I already did that as you can see right here. I put in all of my different websites and it took all of the text off all of those websites and when it was all said and done. You could see 1.8 million characters. Then I added some Q and A just to make sure it always gives the proper information. Sometimes it's giving old information from two years ago because it has a world knowledge. And so now I have to give it a system prompt. So I go here and I basically tell it just like you would in ChatGPT, act like a friendly sales rep for Groove and Groove Digital. Your name is AI Assistant. If here, what it says, you'll provide me with answers. If the answer is not included in the documents that I gave, say, I'm not sure and stop. Refuse to answer any question unrelated to the information that I put into the knowledge base, et cetera, et cetera. And then I come in here and I basically design it, right? I put my, upload my little colors and stuff. And when it's all said and done, I get this little embed. I copy it, okay? And then I put it just like you would Google Analytics. And when that's all done, you get a little chatbot like this. Watch this. How do you bake a cake? We know ChatGPT knows how to bake a cake, but watch what happens here. <clears throat> we told it to say, I'm not sure. It's not going to answer that. But I can say, how do you animate a button on the Groove Pages canvas? And just like this, the instructions I told it were to give it step-by-step -step instructions to a technophobe that's 80 years old. It literally gives you very detailed instructions. That's awesome. So you can say, what is, uh, why is Groove free? And it's going to tell you everything here. And so you'll notice not only here, but if I go inside of my app, I have a little support ticket. Now this support ticket, you're going to see here, it says, need human assistance. I'm going to go here. This is my, this is when they want to go and speak to a human. This is my Zendesk help scout type widget where the mm -hmm. customer would have to click contact support and read articles, but they're not really talking to people until they actually click open a help desk ticket and they got to wait two and two days to get it. Uh, by the answer. way, have well, they, I used help scout before. I'm not sure. Have they added AI as well? They're all going to be adding AI. I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah, they must be. Otherwise so they here, a lot of business. <laughs> yeah. How do I connect my domain with Namecheap? I'm going to leave the typo there, right? Just like that, it's going to tell me exactly how, how do you connect your domain with, with Groove. So this has cut our support tickets down by 28%, brought us from a 91% to a 95% satisfaction rate, and also increased conversions on our front end because people are getting pre-sales. So the only reason why I did that, Navid, is I wanted to explain that with Groove, uh, dot AI, we can also create a knowledge base. So here, I'm just going to call this knowledge base. Let, let me say this. This is one of the problems that you have sometimes with ChatGPT is it has a lot of world knowledge. If you ask it, let's say a polarizing topic, let's talk about socialism, right? If I want to write a topic on socialism, it's going to say something like, Socialism has proponents and opponents. The opponents will say that it doesn't have a free market society, while proponents will say blah, 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 blah. That's the world knowledge. I want to, I wanted to write the way that I think. What if I was able to go to 10 different YouTube videos, a couple of podcasts and blogs that are writing it from a left wing or a right wing point of view? Mine would be right wing, obviously. And if I'm going to write from a right wing point of view, wouldn't it be great that I just, let's just do here, we're going to just put in Elon Musk. I've done this a few times. You're going to see this. I'm just going to call it number three. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we're going to look for Elon Musk documentary. <laughs> we're going to sort by something long just so I could over 20 minutes so I can make a point here. All right. So here's one for an hour and 15, uh, uh, hour and 53 minutes. So I'm going to copy this link and go to YouTube transcript. This YouTube transcript is free, right? This yes. just seems like it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, with ours, with Groove.ai, you'll be able to just paste the YouTube URL and our API will just get this for you. But I do this demo so that people can actually it's see. pretty accurate, like this script or something like that? What's it's... happening is it's Google. They're using their AI voice technology and everything. And it's, mm -hmm. it's basically what they use to create the captions. So it's pulling the captions and their AI is getting, I'm sure it's as good or better than Descript because it's Google, right? Yeah. But the bottom line is... AI is good enough to figure out the context, right? So what That's I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a text editor. Everybody's familiar with this. We'll move this out of the way. And I'll just open up a new file here. And I'm going to paste this in here and save Elon Musk 1. But whatever your topic might be, you're feeding it something that I call that matches your ideology or methodology. So you're feeding it with your past works. Like I could go and take... All of the videos that I've ever done talking about funnels, the butterfly marketing manuscript, and basically upload my consciousness and my DNA and now have it repurpose that knowledge base rather than its world knowledge. So I'm going to save this like that. Now, I want you to imagine if I went to uh, Google and I found a uh, YouTube and I found like 10 more of these, I would repeat the process. I'd have 10 documents. And now to create the knowledge base, I would go like this, upload a file. Now, you could upload at a time up to five megabytes. But then you could do it unlimited number of times. How much is the Bible in terms of megabytes, in terms of just text? 4.2 megabytes. War and mm -hmm. Peace is 4.0 megabytes. The Great Gatsby is 800 kilobytes and a four hour webinar is about 250 kilobytes. So mm -hmm. you could upload unlimited number of things. So let's just say Elon Musk number one. And now just imagine if I, I had 30 videos that, that were on a topic that I liked or podcasts or blogs or anything that I could turn, transcribe into text, PDFs that I could upload. I would go up and now say Elon Musk number two or three. And when I'm said and done, I simply click on train. <clears throat> and now we're creating a knowledge base just like I did over here. We're creating a knowledge base that we can now use as the information. And remember, we said, how do you bake a cake? And it said, I don't know. So that, that proves, and I always show that demos, it proves that we can shut off its world knowledge, even though we do know that ChatGP needs us how to bake a cake, and it could only answer what's in the knowledge base. What would happen now is I'm going to uh, create a, a project, <coughs> and I'm not going to, for, for the rest of the demo, I'm not going to use the knowledge base because I don't want to write about Elon Musk but I'm just gonna uh, show you essentially. Let's, I'm just gonna call this uh, Navid, just, yeah. that's my project. <clears throat> but I would call it whatever I want. Navid, what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose GPT 3.5. <clears throat> and the reason why we're doing that, as I said, it demos a lot faster. If I want better output, I would certainly use uh, ChatGPT 4, but it just takes too long. Now, if I wanted to use that knowledge base, I would turn on the knowledge base and I would just go find the knowledge base that we just trained it on. And then I can say, how much do we want it to influence? Only 25%. That means it can use its world knowledge. And here it goes from nudge to influence. If I go to 75%, it leans heavily on the knowledge base or at hundred percent, we're saying, Hey, you can only repurpose what's in the knowledge base. You can't repurpose anything from world knowledge, but we're going to shut that off for this demo here. Now we're going to go to the presets. This is where the power starts. So, I want you to describe to me your audience here. We're going to write an email to promote this podcast. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say act like, right? So this is what the prompt engineering normally tells you to do. But look at this. We've got all of these different things we could tell it to act like. A, a, a fiction author? Great. Stephen King. Or we mm -hmm. want to do screenwriter? Let's talk like Quentin Tarantino or Aaron Sorkin. But in, uh, and it's all these additional ones that we can do here. But let's you just stay like with the direct response. Yeah. yeah, direct response marketer. Look at this. You got Dan Kennedy, Gary Halbert, Joe Sugarman, all the famous copywriters are here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do Gary Halbert. I like the way he writes copy. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, Naveed, um, we're going to drill down into the audience and avatar. But who's your target market uh, for this? And is it for digital the... marketers? Yeah, for this one, it's like content creators, uh, solopreneurs, digital business owners, I mean, marketers. So let's put that here. So uh, solopreneurs, 
solo print EURs. I never get that right. Oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I got that right. I usually yeah. right click as soon as I write entrepreneur. Yeah, digital creators or content creators basically is uh, I mean, it's a AI for creators, you know, so. All right. And uh, what age group would you say they are? More my age or more millennial? Uh, if you probably, were going to write your copy to one person. Yeah. I mean, mostly in my audience. I mean, let me see. Like, would say my products, maybe they are like from maybe late 20s to like early 40s, something like that. I mean, that's the most, but I have. So we're going to say, I, I would say uh, Gen Z. I'm just going to put, uh, yeah, Gen Z. I'm like in my 30s. But, to yeah. millennials. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 30, 37. <clears throat> All right. And uh, now some people, right? I work with stay-at-home moms or I work with male fitness instructors. If that's the case, then you put female or or just male, but you 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 uh, talk to both people or is it mostly male or mostly female? I have around 50-50 in my audience. All right, so then we don't honest, need to write anything. Cool. Yeah. We're gonna write in a uh, 10th grade reading level. That's always gonna give us the best uh, output for, for copywriting. And then rules. This is if you have any additional prompts that you want to add to the prompt that you heard gets you a better output. You can put it here. Or you can put exclusions. Like let's say I was going to write a blog post on the 10 things you need to do to create a good funnel. I'm going to put this. Never mention click funnels. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I hit enter. <laughs> or I might even say never mention Russell <laughs> yeah. Brunson. Not that I don't like no, but, I mean, it makes but, sense right right like, i mean it's good if you don't want to let's say you're writing a review or something you might not want to mention like a tool you don't like or something like exactly. that maybe a tool that you hate this is really useful exactly actually. you could say never be negative don't be negative ne never beat up on the competitors right yeah. i'm going to take those out that was just for an example and watch what we're going to do here we're going to click save and i'm just going to name this um uh ai uh and then i'm just going to put navid here all right so here's my preset. And at any time I could look at it uh, just by doing this. And if I just wanna make a quick little change to see how the output changes, great. I click apply and I don't have to resave another preset, but we're just gonna cancel that. Let's just make sure that we have that uh, there. Yeah, it's still 10th grade. All right, now we're gonna optimize for, um, well, we wanna write an email. So we wanna optimize for direct response, okay? Uh, what's happening here, I don't want to get too into this stuff, but people always ask, like, what's going on in the background? This is the developer section for AI, okay? And what we're doing is we're changing things like temperature and top P and frequency penalty. And these things change the output. Again, it, it's more just the secret sauce that's happening in the background. This is the part you're going to love, Naveed. Now we're going to go into the format and framework. So the format is like, what's the format that you want? Do you want to write a blog post? And... Once you say blog post, then you could choose what type of blog post you want to write. Um, and you can say, I want the blog title, the keywords, the preview snippet. And in this one, I want to use bullets. Or you can say, as we saw here, you want to write an email. Now you're getting different frameworks for emails. We have all of these different type of frameworks. Uh, the feature advantage benefit storytelling framework. Uh, you can do an outline, a headline, and include pre and sub headlines if you want, subject line, or all of these additional things, short form sales letter, long form uh, video script for voiceover, VSL, testimonials, product descriptions, et cetera, et cetera. But for, for yours, we're just going to do an email. Um, let's use a framework. Let's use problem solution. Uh, and remember, we could have uploaded a knowledge base of of a webinar or something like that, and then repurpose and say, hey, write an email to promote this webinar. And it would have listened to the three hour webinar and it would have the context. Since we don't have any context, we can't talk about your product because it doesn't know it and we're not gonna take the time to create a knowledge base. So we'll do something we know it knows like Trello, right? So I do want a subject line. I do want a preview snippet and I wanna make uh, use of uh, bullets here. I also wanna show you something that you're noticing over here. We have our document ready for us. So this is a project. I have search. I can share this project with other people, like a Google Doc. I could give them full permissions so they could see everything and continue to work, or I could give them only view permissions so they cannot actually create any work they can only see. I can hide the settings if I don't want them to see my secret sauce. And I can even hide the chat so they don't see anything. And then over here, you would basically just keep 
putting in here. This might be where you might call this landing page. Landing page copy. And we're going to call this one, let's say, affiliate swipe one. And I would just keep adding and creating all the assets that I'm going to create. I might have 15 or 20 of these. And then when I'm done, I click share and I send this over to uh, my client. And then, okay, I wrote, uh, here's all your copy for your campaign or, or somebody that works on a team or whatever. Let's go back. Let's get everything back in here. <clears throat> We're going to, oh, you know what I wanted to show you was this. Remember this output that we had? Yeah. And we wanted to be able to not only keep our, our chat, our chat and our documents in the same project, but look at this. When we paste our editor keeps everything perfect here, okay? So I'm just gonna delete that and we're gonna continue. Now I'm gonna, what type of tone do you wanna to write to your members? Maybe friendly and enth enthusiastic or something like that. Okay, is there enthusiasm? I, I like to write usually in very short sentences, very simple, like Brian Dean would write. Okay, so I don't well, know. yeah, I'll show, I'll show you that in the next thing. Yeah. You're gonna see something called output. So yeah. well, let's just put friendly style, we'll put conversational. Yeah, and conversational. for this, yeah, for the goal, we wanna generate sales and lead generation. Okay, great. So now in the output, um, I can choose my language. We have every language known to man. I could say short, medium, or long. I'm gonna say short, cause it's a demo. And this is what you were just talking about, the output. I can do the markdown so I can get everything in H1 and H2 and look at what you just said. I usually write in chunks, no more than one or two sentences per paragraph. So you could write very much like Frank Kern and Gary Halbert. And you could tell it to bold, you know, you can basically, you know, that copy like this, this is a, uh, <coughs> Yeah. The Gary Halbert letter. Gary Halbert used to write, you know, in small little chunks using bold and different things like that. Yeah, I've, I've uh, read some of it. Actually, I yeah. rewrote some of his stuff before when I got started. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, we've got everything set up now. So as I was saying right now, all I need to do is write, put the protein in, right? This is Subway. Right. This is where you say you want the toasted bread with the lettuce and the jalapenos and what kind of cheese do you want? And so I always tell the people, if it's chicken, there's a big difference between Kung Pao chicken and chicken franchise. The difference all happens here. This is all the seasoning and the recipe and how you bake it and everything. All we need to do now, remember what we said, everybody's telling you, you need prompt engineering. You don't need that anymore. You simply put in your protein. What's your topic? Trello. All we need to do is, is this. <clears throat> and we are writing an email in a problem solution framework uh, and it's giving us a subject line. And this is the email written like, uh, like Gary Halbert. And we told it to include bullets. So we're getting these bullets here, just like this. And when I'm done, I simply go over to here and I move it over to my document, just like this. And I can now create a document editor here. So now what we have is we have, we, you now have the ability to create a knowledge base, upload information so that you could repurpose it. You can write to the right target audience as we saw right here, we're, we're, we're writing to uh, direct, we're writing in the style of Gary Halbert to content creators in a 10th grade reading level. We optimize this for direct response. It's an email uh, written in the problem solution framework. So are you tired? of being overwhelmed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have the, the tone and the style. I think the tone we said was friendly, so this is friendly. And the output, we have everything the way that we want. If we wanted to change that to, in, in Spanish, we would just say, hmm. well, I think I actually have to, I can't click additional response because that just sends the previous prompt. So I'll just have to say Trello and just do it again like this. Did I not choose? That's interesting. Well, not exactly sure why that didn't put that. Oh, you know what? I know why. It's because it's taking the context of the previous one. What I what if I want to switch to Spanish? Let's let that finish, and I'll just create a new uh, chat here when that's done. Okay. And now, this chat, all we have to do is put Trello, and that will come out in Spanish for us. There you go. The problem mm -hmm. was it was trying to uh, be part of the previous chat. 
Um, yeah, yeah. There you go. So yeah, so you've got the ability to you know switch to dark mode or uh, change the you know the color of the user interface uh, like this. Uh, you can um, change language of the user, user interface, as you'll see here. Everything's going to change. So so that's pretty much Groove.ai. And Mike, how how much do you usually when when you I mean I guess you're using this in your day to day a lot. So how how are you how much do you edit usually when it comes to you getting an output from the AI? How much do you uh, how much do you edit after? Do you get it like eighty percent done, eighty five percent? Where where do you get it to before? Yeah, before you edit? that's why we call this here content copilot. In my yeah. in, so if I could, um, I'll stop sharing my screen just for a minute. The, yeah. the reason why we call it content copilot is we disagree with. Jasper and copy.ai and writer, and it's not their fault. They were given something I didn't even know about open AI, this platform, they were using GPT-2 and all this, and they were basically had an API. So they thought that the, the way that you wrote a blog would be a wizard. What's your topic? Trello. What are the keywords? And what's your tone? And then it would write it for you. You didn't write that blog. You had nothing to do with it. And you would put that out there. You really didn't write. And then all of a sudden, uh, Sam Altman is telling all of the de developers, hey, I think you're getting it wrong. The future is chat. And they were all going, you know what you're talking about. Nobody wants chat. I would have said the same thing. I would have thought that little intercom that's in the bottom of every website, users don't want to. They don't like talking to fake chat bots. So none of them listen to him. So he said, screw it. I'll build it myself. And ChatGPT was not supposed to be ChatGPT Plus and ChatGPT Enterprise, all these things that are coming. When it first came out at the bottom, it said developer demo. They created it to attract developers like me to go, oh my God, this thing is great. And Sam Altman was right. The future is chat. So we all started using ChatGPT and that's when I realized I love it and hate it at the same time. Um, I can't use a knowledge base. It doesn't integrate with documents. It doesn't have, I can't transfer anything without it messing up the text and I can't search for it for any of my work. So I love ChatGPT, but you have to be a prompt engineering specialist. So we've created all the prompt engineering and that's what we did. And so that's why we call it content copilot. So when the work is done, then I'll go in there and then I'll start rewriting and giving it a little bit of my flavor. What this does is it eliminates writer's block. It allows me to get uh, 80 to 85% perfect. And then I'll just look at the copy and I'll say, hey, I really don't like this sentence. Or it always likes to start emails with, um, I hope today finds you well. I'm going <laughs> to give everybody a little thing. If you ever get anything from your attorney, your friend, a coworker, anybody, and the email says, uh, I, I hope today finds you well, watch this. Let's do a little, uh, let, let's see who's writing. Um, let's see who's writing. Emails using AI. I'm going to go into my Gmail inbox here and I'm going to type. <laughs> That's so interesting. Let's, I let's hope check it out. today finds you well. <clears throat> oh my God. All right. Senator Rich Scott says it had added in there. Let me, <laughs> let me put it in, in quotes. Um, yeah. I hope today finds you well. It's in everything. Let me just see. Maybe it's. That's pretty formal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're seeing it now. Hope uh, in it, it, all the emails that we're getting from everybody, it'll say, I hope, I hope this uh, today finds you well, which basically means that we're, you know, you're seeing who's using AI, which is okay. But I'll yeah. usually just go in at that point and, uh, you know, and take, take whatever we have in here. And I'll, now I'm, I want to go into straight work mode. So I'll just go full screen or I could either get, even get rid of, um, of this and I'll just start working in here and, I'll take a look at everything, write what I want, add some images, you know, put my name in here at the end, whatever that might be. And look, I don't like, if I could write my own name, I don't like this to your organizational success, right? Like that's, some of this stuff isn't yeah. me. So I might, I might just rewrite it a little bit different, but uh, yeah. yeah. So I, we, we consider it content copilot. It's so, it's, we want to let people know what is a copilot? Well, uh, essentially, um, there are cars that drive themselves now. There are planes that fly themselves now. But the pilot is a person that chooses the day you're leaving, the time you're leaving, the airport you're leaving, what runway, uh, what altitude, what airspeed, what's the destination city, all of those different things. And the autopilot is just going to help you do all of those things. I, wanna, I want users to be able to say when they use Groove.ai that I wrote that sales letter.
Why? Because you said, this is the target audience and this is the framework that I want to use and this is their pain points. And I took some time to, to create a knowledge base with the actual information that I wanted to repurpose. And then when you look at something, that is how I feel like, hey, this is the stuff that used to be really hard for me when I wanted to write a sales letter. The, the writing, I need a calculator for words. This is a calculator for words. Mm. No, it's really interesting because I saw this when also when you what you talked about other tools, right? And like what you wanted to build instead and do things maybe a little bit different. I think Jasper and some tools, they added the uh, chat as an afterthought. Like yeah. I think they added something like Jasper ch chat and things like that, but it wasn't like it quite, it wasn't so quickly. It was kind of reluctant a little bit. At least what I saw, it was like a, an additional feature it was not like part of part of the original thing. So right. that's kind of what they I added saw chat and it was just chat gpt they didn't give you anything that you weren't getting yeah. in chat gpt and they struggled exactly. they they struggled mightily and it's not their fault chat gpt showed the world everybody's in love with it and i like chat gpt i just hate every single time i start over again with hours you saw let, let me just show you real quick what i mean is <clears throat> you know with hours when we go into here and uh, for me to create a new um, a new chat, I simply go here like this. Okay. Well, guess what? When I do that in ChatGPT, when I go from this one and I click new chat, well, it's like starting a whole new project, right? Yeah. With ours, when I click new, and we do it on the top here, like like uh, like Chrome tabs, I still have all of these settings are still set. So I can and, just write again Trello. And what I've always yeah. hated about ChatGPT is every time I start over again, it's like, all right, here <laughs> yeah. we go. Act like a direct response. You know, and mm -hmm. it's like, you got to start all over again. But, and so but does, I love uh, it. I learned your style, like, because you said that you saw in the email, it was not exactly like Mike, right? Or exactly like how you wanted to write mm -hmm. it, like your, but let's say you start adding the correct tone and things like that, how you want to start the emails, how you want to end the emails. Does it get that right eventually? Like to kind of get better? No, it's not going to learn your styles. It's just going to use all the settings that are that are on the left. So you can, at any okay. time, you could say, you know, write like Stephen King or write like Oprah Winfrey or, you know, uh, so you can you can get all of those styles and you can change the tone, the reading level. You can make it for elementary school kids if you're writing a children's book. Or, you know, if you're writing a white paper, you might want to move that up to, you know, college level or something like that. So mm -hmm. we basically just let you change the settings on the side very, very quickly. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know in the pre-chat, we talked a little bit about the future of AI, which is really interesting. And we have got into a lot of stuff. You talked a little bit about auto GPT and like this kind of stuff. Can you explain a little bit about this? Because this is really fascinating stuff, actually. Uh, yeah, so um, there's... Uh, there's there's something that came out uh, called uh well yeah there was auto gpt that was about 90 days ago and then these guys realized the problem with auto gpt and so let's let's just slow down for a second let's start yeah. with chat gpt yeah chat gpt everybody thinks it's ai and it's going to take over the world and all those things no chat G chat gpt is sleeping at all times and then you put in a prompt and it says wake up what do we got and it answers your question and goes back to sleep and it, do, it's, it doesn't sit there waiting for you. And we call that basically task-based AI. You give it a task, write me a blog, it gives it to you, it falls back asleep. And you do it again, it's like knocking on the door, it comes up. Auto GPT, what auto GPT went from task-driven AI to goal-driven AI. And that meant you said, <clears throat> um, here's the goal that I want to achieve. And then it would reflect and say, well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to need to go to IMDB, scrape the database and find this. And I'm going to need to put this into um, another software that's going to be able to uh, get all the data. Then I'm going to need to find out whether the top grossing movies or whatever it was that you asked it. Um, and then maybe you told it to post it to your blog. It's going to, it's going to say, great, I'm going to need uh, access to your account and all this different stuff. And so the problem was auto GPT was not able to reflect on itself. So Microsoft came out with something called Autogen, right? And just recently there was something called ChatDev. Um, and so Autogen is, is multiple agents that work together. So you just saw that we could say act like, right? But imagine I said this, I'm the super agent and I drag over 
uh, something and I say, okay, this is the, uh, the CEO, act like somebody running uh, an organization and blah, blah, blah. My, uh, the goal is to uh, create a blog post that posts every Monday um, on my WordPress blog. These are my WordPress credentials. I want the blog post to be about spiritual healing, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Great. And underneath that person, you hire, a, you, you drag over a, a CMO, little a cartoon agent, you drag them over. And then underneath that, you're going to drag under a keyword research person. And then you're going to write the blog writer. And then the image creator that creates the images with Dolly 3. And then you're going to um, have another person. You're going to say, you're the legal person. Make sure that they didn't say anything illegal and blah, 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 blah. And uh, then you have the implementer that posts it to WordPress. And then you drag another person over and they transcribe it, uh, turn it into 11 labs and create a voice. And then you have another person that makes a video and then posts it to YouTube. And so now you have all of these multiple agents and the CMO now says, okay, what we need to do is create a topic and we have a researcher. I didn't even say we have a researcher that, that finds out the good topics. That person gives it to the keyword person, then the writer, and these people actually work together. And I'm going to show you, Navi, this actually exists right now. <coughs> yeah. Um, this is something called... Um, uh, Autogen, and I'm going to just pull up somebody that looked up here the other day that I sent this to. His name was Reggie. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. Now, you're not going to hear anything, okay? And what you're seeing, I'll make this a little bigger, and we'll go full screen here. Yeah, I got <laughs> Oh, my you God, my it. computer is come up. So and what you're seeing here is, uh, and we're building this user interface with Autogen into... Uh, Groove.ai as well. So you have all of these characters, right? A CEO, a CTO, a CPO, uh, all of these are programmers, and literally they can write code and they know how to organize and they know how to uh, create things. And so in this example, you have the CEO and the CTO and you have a design team and the design team creates images. The coding team creates uh, coding. And you literally see them walking back and forth and the person gets up from his desk and says, hey, I found a bug. And then this person writes, I'm not joking. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me fix it. Sends it back to testing. And when it's right, then the documentation team creates a, a company documentation on how the code was written. And another person creates a user manual. And there are these people that have created all of these games that you see here right now with something called Chat Dev. Uh, <clears throat> let's see where this starts. You can see Flappy Birds was created. Just going to let this go. Flappy Birds, a, a, a Gamoku game. Matt Saralta created Pong. He downloaded this, my partner. So you can basically tell it to do all these things. This is if you wanted to create it, as you see here, as a, a, a development agency. But later, the person says, well, what if you wanted to create a team and spin up your own uh, AI workforce? And as you see here, you have your research department, just as I was saying. This is your writers. Uh, over here, you have the people that do all the posting. And then over here, even better, you have your analytics team. And they're looking at your Google Analytics and they're saying, hey, Eureka, I found uh, the key to driving sales. We need more. This is a joke. <clears throat> um, I think they put something like uh, women in bikinis, you know, uh, et cetera, was what the guy said. And she was like, oh, promote him immediately, right? But basically... This what what they're saying here, Navid, uh, is that the future. Uh, bup, bup, stop. The future is a video game. We have played games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and City uh, City Skyscrapers, where basically like you you put a highway into a street. Now more people come, and now you get a traffic jam. Okay, we need to build a parking lot. And now uh, more people are moving, so you need to build in plumbing and you need to build schools. And like the little thing is saying, hey, the people are getting upset. They're, they're not happy. Oh, okay, let's create a football stadium. And you actually see all these little simulations happening. Well, we know how to play those games. We've played some cities. We've, we've played Roller Coaster Tycoon, basically what they call economies at scale of these games. But at the end, what was the reward? What if you could tie this stuff to your actual WordPress blog? You could tie it to 11 Labs and HeyGen, and ChatGPT, and Groove.ai, and all of these different things, and, and Vid.io, and all these things. And now these little creatures have access to your computer, 
and your API and your Zapier and your make.com and you literally tell them to do something and they plan and they say, okay, well, what we're going to need to do. And they go out and they actually do this. So the future of AI is managers of AI. When we say it's coming for your jobs, not us entrepreneurs, but content writers, direct response copywriters, lawyers. Imagine if I have on the sales letter, I drag over a little icon of a little cartoon character and I say, you're the legal attorney. Your job is to make sure we don't make any claims. And the sales letter gets written and this guy says, hey, wait a second, you made an income claim. Sorry, I'll fix that. And you'll actually see them having a conversation with each other. It's slightly spooky because sometimes they're polite. And then sometimes when it gets kicked back four times, they start getting angry. They're saying, you're not listening to me. This is the fourth time. Oh, I, and you know, AI, I apologize. Yes, you're right. I'll fix it. And then the other one gets very nice again. Mm -hmm. Thank you for correcting it. I'll send it over to the documentation department and you can watch these conversations play out. And then they're writing the actual code for a game or writing a blog post. This is the future. Um, mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're building a user interface. We hope to get it out where you'll have pre-made teams like programmers or content creators or whatever, wow. or that'll be like a template, or you'll just drag different people over uh, and, and give them a personality. So it's not too far out <coughs> this, because I know, I mean, hey, Jen and things like that, you can like, you know, really mimic the, the voice and stuff like that. Now it's really cool, but like all this kind of working together, like as a team, that's, I mean, can, can be a little bit spooky to some people, I guess, but it's also yeah. really, really fascinating how this actually, and I think that, that as you said, is might, might as well be the future and you're, you're even integrating it into crew.ai to kind of bring some of this in there, which is really yeah. cool. It's like a little, feels like a little bit of a game, like you're playing and, and then you are well, that's, basically that's deciding exactly if you have, also if you have any questions or comments or takeaways for this session, we have covered a lot here, like different things. Be sure to leave a comment uh, below and you know, check out some of the resources. But Mike, do you have any final words of wisdom or anything? So people, you know, if they're interested to get started or or you know anything else you'd like to share before we wrap this one up here? If people are interested in AI, they could go to our Facebook group. Just go to Groove.AI Official on Facebook, and we're always sharing different things like this. I just did a session today where I showed how I did clone myself with HeyGen and connected HeyGen's API to my 11 labs and how we used it to create a video sales letter. So all those different types of things, we're always, we're always sharing the, the cutting edge AI uh, things there. I like to stay on the developer end and the user end. Uh, so I don't share everything. Like this, this auto gen stuff is more conceptual because Microsoft just created it for developers. It's, it's as if I would have shown everybody the back end of open AI. People would have been like, Am I, I think I'm excited, but he seems excited, right? But until you actually see an application, that's what we're starting to see. And just, just here's just one little fun one just for everybody. There's something yeah. called Music Fi, not Musicify. Not like Spotify, it's just music, FY. And that could be .com mm -hmm. or .ai. Just found out about this. We, first it was music, and then they created these things called MIDIs, M-I-D-I's, that allowed you to play anything on a keyboard, but then in GarageBand, say, make it sound like a guitar, make it sound like a trumpet. Well, now this new Musicify, what you can do is you can make any sound, like doom, doom, chicka, doom, 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 and then you click uh, electronic guitar, and then you can do 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 click flute or whatever, and you can make an actual song, and then you can record your voice. It'll auto-tune it, and then you could drop down and say Ed Sheeran, Ari Ari Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, or whatever the case, and you could literally write a song now just by humming and tapping for drums and everything. So that's just one little cute little little thing there for everybody to play around with. Yeah, for sure. I think that will also be a way to monetize AI content. I mean, it's all like it's already there. Like you can license, you know, art and things like this and music and different things. I think that will become bigger even in the future. So yeah. and <laughs> translations really exciting. Are, are getting big too now. You can yeah, uh, yeah. if you go into Hey Jen and you go into the labs, uh mm -hmm. you can upload any video and then choose a language, Portuguese, Spanish, and it'll just <laughs> It'll change that video, match up your lips, and put it yeah. in any language. Hey, hey Jen is uh, it's amazing. I, I yeah. like it. I played around a little bit with this as well. But yeah, I'll link up some resources, Groove.ai, things like that. I have some links. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this and any takeaways. Subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. Ciao for now.